You're listening to episode 21 of the Physical Education Podcast. Today you're going to learn how a pen and a piece of paper might be the key to your recovery. Hi, I'm Pierre Morand, and you're about to learn about the hidden and often misunderstood causes of chronic pain. For 15 years, I suffered with chronic pain with no cause or end in sight. I tried everything I could find, but was often left with unanswered questions and conflicting advice. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and to become a physical therapist. I studied everything I could about pain, about the body, and about health. Along the way, I realized that the solutions to my pain and health issues were within me. I didn't need someone to fix me. I needed to reclaim ownership of my body and fix myself. More importantly, I needed to fix myself while honoring and understanding my body's own wisdom and capacity for self-healing. Since then, I've worked on bringing this knowledge to others in pain combining pain science, psychology, biomechanics, nutrition, and neurology to provide the light bulb moments and self-awareness to take control. Because eventually most people in pain realize they need to understand the bigger picture of what causes chronic pain. The purpose of this podcast is to help you see and navigate that bigger picture so that you can finally reclaim control of your health and overcome pain once and for all. Hi folks, in this episode I'm going to be talking about the value of telling your own story and expressing your own story. And so, just a bit of background, this is something I came to realize later on in my recovery, so thankfully I had overcome most of my own issues with pain by this point, but this new practice, it sort of helped me make sense of things, and it helped me connect the dots and understand the bigger picture of my pain. And I think if I had discovered and implemented this earlier in my life, I may have overcome pain quicker. So my hope is that you can use this method to accelerate your own recovery and to stop making the same mistakes over and over. And this sort of nicely sums up my motivation for a lot of the work that I do, because as I've mentioned before, you know, I've gone through all of my own issues with pain, with health and through trying all the different therapies available and I'd basically I'd love to help others learn from my journey and learn from my mistakes because I think the biggest lesson for me was how the how simple the recovery process could be how simple the solution to your pain can be but if we're blind to our tendencies and we're blind to the patterns in our lives we'll keep making the same mistakes and not making meaningful progress so the process is very simple Essentially, it's a sort of self-administered talk therapy. So you're simply writing and telling your life story or telling your story from the time when your pain emerged. And you're taking a bit of time to unravel everything that has happened because we can we can kind of brush things off and keep going and never really allow ourselves to dwell on what happened. And and that's um, a great strength of ours is our resilience. But uh, we don't really tend to take time to dwell on what happened possibly because we don't really want to dwell on what happened because it may be too painful but it's by laying it all out and revisiting things that two specific things can happen and the first is that we start to see what's really been driving our pain we start to see things as more of an objective observer and the second change is through the process of expressing what happened and it can have a a therapeutic effect to verbalize these things to put words to these things and then to express them and and like i said it's very much like a traditional talk therapy in that sense now i'd like to explore both of these benefits that are mentioned in more detail and offer you some strategies that you can begin to use in this episode so in the past i've talked a lot about behavior and identity and their influence on pain and just as a quick summary the you know, the outcomes that we have now you know the situation that you are now uh, that you are in now where we find ourselves in life and all that uh, all of these things are the result of the decisions we make or the decisions we don't make and our decisions and our actions and our outcomes uh, and our behaviors sorry our decisions our actions and our behaviors are governed by our unconscious beliefs so in order to create better outcomes or in other words, to create a life that doesn't result in chronic pain, we need to understand the things that drive our behaviors. We need to understand our identity at this deep level. 
And I believe telling your story and outlining it on paper is one of the best and simplest ways of understanding who we are as individuals. And I mentioned this before in one of my newsletters, but for a while I was I was really into the TV show Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. And, it's, you know, I'm sure you know it. It's a show where the chef Gordon Ramsay goes to failing restaurants to help them out. And without fail, the same issues come up with the people working in these restaurants. So their food is terrible. Uh, they have no work ethic and they're miserable and they want help. And so they acknowledge that they need help. But then they're completely in denial about what's wrong. And I understand that it's a TV show and I, and I imagine that some of it is dramatized, but it's remarkable how little self-awareness people can have and how they can have such glaring faults and problems right under their noses, yet not be able to see or accept them. So I found that this act of writing out your story and seeing it from an outside perspective helps you understand the destructive patterns that you keep getting into and it makes it easier to see where you, you yourself as an individual are responsible for your own pain. And a simple exercise you can try to illustrate this is to think of a time when a friend of yours asked for advice or when a friend of yours may have been struggling with something. So a time when the solution to their issue was perhaps completely obvious to you or it was really simple but Perhaps for them, it was harder to understand and harder to see from a removed perspective. And I think um, I think an obvious example is if someone is in a relationship that they that clearly isn't working and they can see that because certain problems keep coming up, uh, but they can't end the relationship. They can't take the steps that maybe they, they should take because they're emotionally invested in it and they're in love with this person. And that's fair enough. And as an outside observer, it's really obvious to you what the solution is and you have no emotional attachment so you can clearly see the solution. So then you might think of times when you've had similar issues. Perhaps you went through the exact same issue as your friend and when they were struggling you could tell immediately what was wrong but now now that it's your problem you don't see the parallels, you don't see the mirror image so you don't see that it's the same issue with the same simple solution. And as you try this exercise and you begin to highlight key moments in your life and in your journey through pain, you may begin to notice patterns and you'll begin to see how you keep coming up against the same issues again and again. And at that point, hopefully, you'll finally understand your role in perpetuating the cycle of pain that you're in. Ultimately, our aim with this kind of work is awareness. We want to know ourselves inside out. We want to know how our unconscious tendencies shape our trajectory through life. And it's not that acknowledging these will necessarily undo and resolve these unhelpful tendencies, but it will give us awareness and clarity. And these will give us a second to pause and to course correct, so to speak, because, you know, in, in the chaos of everything that's happening at any given moment, you'll be able to spot your unhelpful tendencies creeping in and beginning to steer things in the wrong direction. So with this awareness and this clarity, you'll be able to pause and notice long enough to simply choose to do something different, choose a different outcome by choosing a different behavior. As an example, perhaps you tend to catastrophize your experience of pain. So once you feel pain, you think, oh no, here we go again, this is going to ruin my day. And you start to see all the dominoes that are going to fall as a result of this and how your experience of pain now will ripple into the rest of your day. And perhaps you've been doing this for so long that this is completely automatic and it seems logical and accurate to you. It seems, you know, what else, how else would you respond? It's your automatic response and it makes perfect sense. So now when you feel pain, when that automatic voice of catastrophization creeps in, you have the awareness and the opportunity to change trajectories, to simply decide to respond differently. And of course, you know, this can be easier said than done, but it is that simple. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So as time passes, you gain the ability to control your life and to control your outcomes because you're no longer a victim of circumstances, which is a huge, huge step to take. And I I won't go into the victim mentality today as it deserves its own episode, but this can be a major factor in people's recovery and it can be very, very subtle You know, when I say the word victim mentality, people might say, oh, that's not me. And obviously there is this very overt 
uh, example of victim mentality but i think it can be very subtle and it can really work against us but anyway like i said that's for another day and for its own episode so now let's look at the value of expressing our stories like i said part of the benefits you get from telling your story is through expression through self-expression just letting it out so to speak and this is part of the benefit of talk therapies like i said and of course it can help to have someone to tell your story to to tell them you know to tell them what happened and have them ask you about it so that you can sort of unpack things and see what comes up and maybe get a different perspective and you can uh, maybe they can spot things that you you're not seeing and obviously that's the 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 job of a therapist but a good friend can do that but if you can't do that if you can't talk to someone or maybe you're not comfortable with that yet you can simply talk to an empty room and that, that might seem weird but uh, then if that's the case if that seems weird i'd ask you how much do you want to get better you know and and, and notice that limiting belief so there's there's something really really interesting about the act of uh, verbalizing things whether it's um, whether it's speaking or in writing the act of consolidating a thought into words whether spoken or written seems to have this clarifying effect because we have feelings and sensations in our bodies that we can't always explain you know we feel a certain way but we don't know how to describe it it's a sort of nebulous thing that on the one hand you understand very well because you feel it in your body you know you know it intimately but you also can't necessarily give it a name yet and it's in the act of verbalizing it and giving it a name and giving it clear parameters that you finally come to a realization this is what i found a lot in my personal practice of expressive writing or expressive talking and it's part of the reason why i decided to focus on this podcast because the act of writing writing so i write out my script i have a rough script i've talked about it before just to keep me on track because on track because otherwise i tend to ramble but the act of writing and then speaking this information to you now as i am now um and you know then sharing my own personal stories offers me an opportunity for growth that helps me realize things and consolidate my ideas and hopefully hopefully right now it's helping you and it's helping others who are in pain it helps the listener to come to different realizations about the cause of their own pain so in order to do this kind of work all you need is a pen and a piece of paper and i would personally recommend writing out your story by hand versus typing it so physically write it with a pen and paper rather than typing it and then say it out loud so tell your story the act of of writing alone can be very beneficial and like i said part of this is the effort of putting your feelings into words and that's it's as if giving it a name allows you to let go of it and you can think about all of this in in sort of whatever way helps you and whatever whatever way makes the most sense and you may think of the act of self-expression as almost a sort of purging of the information and of course if that doesn't fit into your understanding or perception of your body then you don't have to do that i like to think of it as solving a puzzle sort of like tetris so when you get all the blocks lined up then all then that line disappears and it's like you're solving a puzzle in your head and you're consolidating and making sense of thoughts and memories and once you get it so to speak or once you've learned the lesson from that time or moved on from that issue it resolves itself so tell your story tell your life story or the story of your life since you've been in pain and ask yourself what was going on in your life how were you doing overall how were you doing in general what were the major struggles or challenges in your life and write about anything and everything don't assume that something is irrelevant or disconnected from your pain just write it if it's relevant great if it's not that's fine too it's just more information it's more color for the report so to speak now if there was no clear onset of the pain or no distinct trauma associated with the pain what you can do is start 6 to 12 months before the pain emerged so what else was going on in your life were there any major changes uh, perhaps a new job perhaps relationships ending significant losses of any kind maybe you're moving apartment moving to a different part of the country or to a different part of the world basically any change to your life whether physical psychological 
or social, just write it out and express yourself. And as you get more comfortable with this and you begin to see key moments and patterns that stand out, then you can start to dig a bit deeper into these. Now, if nothing seems to stand out, then it may be worth challenging yourself to speak your story out loud. So tell the story to someone and see what comes up. Now, in my experience, if something is still bothering you, whether consciously or unconsciously, it's going to be apparent in your body language. So when you say it, when you say the story out out loud, when you recount the memory, you know, are there any signs of discomfort when you when you recount your story? Uh, You think of it this way. Suppose you're reliving a car accident that caused your back pain. Perhaps you feel like you've moved on from this and it doesn't really bother you. But can you recount the story from a detached and neutral perspective? Or does it still have this negative charge to it? Do those thoughts still have power over you? Then, if you're comfortable enough, now you can look towards working through these experiences like, uh, you know, the ones that are coming up and digging a bit deeper to their source, to their meaning and all that kind of stuff. And I've included a series of questions in the show notes that you can use uh, to work through these experiences. And that's going to guide you through that process. Now, going forward, I'd encourage you to take some time to write your own story. So get a notebook and a pen and start from the day your pain began. Or like I said, if that's not particularly clear, start six to 12 months before this and recount significant experiences in your life. Uh, Recount the way the, the pain affected and continues to affect your life. And think of this as therapy if you want. You, you know, I would encourage you to let it all out. See what emotions and sensations come up for you and, and, and simply take note of these. Sit with the thoughts, notice them, notice the patterns and deepen your understanding of yourself. The more you write and the more you allow yourself to express yourself and to just say whatever comes up without censoring yourself, the more freedom and ease you will feel in your body and the more clarity you will have about your pain and how you can influence it. So once your story is on paper, consider vocalizing it. Say it out loud. How does it sound? Is your voice still carrying the trauma, so to speak? Are you still affected by what happened? And do those thoughts still carry negative emotional weight in your body? As always, I've included questions and general templates to follow in the show notes. With this work, you really need to listen to your body. So don't force things and don't go down any avenues that you're not ready for because it can be really, really demanding to bring up the past and to confront it. So you need to you need to use your own judgment and reach out for help if you need it, whether that's to a friend, uh, to a family member, to a local therapist or to me. You can message me and I'll guide you through this process. So I hope you enjoy this work and I'd love to hear about your progress and the light bulb moments that come from this uh, that come from this exercise. So uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Physical Education Podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with someone in need. If you found value in the information here, they will too. So please share this in whatever way you can. If you have any questions, you can email me directly at pa at thebackpaincoach.net. I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. If you'd like more information to help you overcome pain, be sure to follow The Back Pain Coach on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube and to join my newsletter. The major turning points in my own recovery have come from changes in perception and through learning more about myself. I believe that we can help others by sharing information that expands their minds. Finally, I'd greatly appreciate if you could leave a positive review on iTunes or Stitcher so that others may find this information and you can play a positive role in their healing journey. Thanks again for listening.